Google and MIT dropped a data privacy breakthrough that can spot hidden trends without exposing a single user. At the same time, Google unleashed Nano Banana, an image model that's blazing fast, dirt cheap, and shockingly good at edits. And Microsoft? They're finally going solo with their own foundation models, trained on thousands of NVIDIA H100 GPUs and already powering Copilot. This is massive, wild, and unheard of. So let's break it down. Let's kick things off with a quiet but powerful move from Google and MIT, one that's all about how platforms handle your data. Every time you open an app like YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Spotify, or even just Google search, there's an invisible engine working behind the scenes. It studies endless streams of clicks, scrolls, and comments to figure out what people care about. That's why your YouTube feed feels uncanny, why TikTok seems to predict tomorrow's memes, and why Spotify suggests an underground artist you didn't even know existed. The magic trick is making this work while hiding the activity of any single person. That balance between learning from the crowd and protecting the individual has always been fragile. Now, a new algorithm from Google and MIT researchers could shift the whole game. It lets platforms pull out not only the obvious trends, but also the faint early signals hiding in the noise, all while keeping users' identities completely shielded. The technical problem has been the same for years. Imagine data sets the size of every Google query ever logged, or billions of tweets and reviews. How do you spotlight what's important without exposing the outlier? The one person who types something unique. If it is common, it can be published. If it is rare enough to identify someone, it must stay hidden. Old techniques solve this by giving each item a score, adding random noise to disguise individuals, then checking if the noisy score cleared a preset threshold. It worked on large-scale systems like Hadoop and Spark, but efficiency was a mess. Popular items got mountains of weight they did not need, while quieter but still meaningful entries almost never broke through. It was like a shouting contest where only the loudest were heard, no matter how valuable the whispers might be. The new method, called MAD, Max Adaptive Degree, changes that dynamic. Picture a traffic jam where one lane is overflowing. Instead of letting cars back up endlessly, traffic officers redirect some of that flow into open lanes. MAD does the same with data. Each user's contribution starts as a small, even allocation across their items, adjusted by how many things they interacted with. When an item already towers above the threshold, its extra weight is shaved down and redistributed to borderline ones. Suddenly those hidden, quieter signals are not drowned out anymore. The process goes step by step. Initialize each user's share, trim excess from overrepresented items, funnel that excess into underrepresented ones, fine tune the balance, add Gaussian noise for privacy, and then release results. The upgraded version MAD 2R takes it even further by splitting the operation into two passes. The first round builds a rough sketch, the second round safely reuses the noisy sketch to sharpen the picture, that extra layer is what gives MAD2R its real edge. The testing results were striking. Researchers ran the algorithm on nine massive datasets, including Reddit, IMDb, Twitter, Wikipedia, Amazon, and two of the biggest public corpora, ClueWeb and Common Crawl. Across all nine, MAD2R outperformed every other parallel algorithm. On Common Crawl alone, roughly 800 billion user item pairs and 1.8 billion distinct items. Google reports that under standard privacy settings, the system still captured about 99.9% of entries and 97% of database pairs, all while preserving user level differential privacy. So even though the system only revealed a fraction of the data, it captured nearly the entire story. The dominant signal stayed strong, the subtle ones finally surfaced, and individual privacy remained intact. Now, while Google was pushing smarter data privacy, they also dropped something flashier. And yeah, it comes with the strange name, Nano Banana. Officially, it is called Gemini 2.5 Flash Image Preview, and it is built to crush three things, speed, cost, and quality. First, the basics. It is already live in Google AI Studio and the Gemini API open for anyone to try. Images and edits pop out almost instantly. Each one costs about $0.039, that is 0.28 UN CNY, or just under 4 cents. At scale, that price makes it one of the cheapest large image generation models available today, right in line with OpenAI's options. 
But the real upgrade is consistency. Upload a photo once and the model locks onto identity and style. Your face, your posture, even clothing details stay intact across edits. It can drop you into ancient Egypt, give you a 60s beehive haircut, or stick your dog in a tutu without breaking character or slipping into uncanny valley territory. The edits feel natural, they just work. And it is not just one-off tricks. This model handles multi-image editing, merging you and your dog on a basketball court. It pulls off multi-step edits, repainting walls, adding furniture, filling in a whole room without glitches. It supports style transfer, like designing a raincoat from flower petal textures. It even leverages world knowledge to build environments, props, or costumes that make sense in context. To showcase the possibilities, Google rolled out demo apps. Pass Forward lets you preview yourself in different historical eras. Co-drawing turns image editing into an interactive tutor experience, and every single output comes with Google's invisible Synth ID watermark baked in. If you are using the Consumer Gemini app, there is also a visible watermark layered on top, so traceability is always clear. And yes, people are already stress testing it. Google's own Jeff Dean made himself a collectible football card. Dimas Asabis at DeepMind built stylized avatars. Online, users are flooding feeds with edits, pets, kids, cosplay, family portraits, fantasy mashups. It is spreading fast, and this is still just the preview phase. But while all eyes were on Gemini, Microsoft was quietly making its own move, and it has serious implications. For years, Microsoft has leaned heavily on OpenAI's models to power Bing, Copilot, and Windows features, but now they have launched two models of their own, MAI Voice One and MAI One Preview. This is not a side project, it is Microsoft going solo in AI. Let's start with MAI Voice One. This one is built for speech and it is incredibly fast. It can generate one minute of audio in under a second on a single GPU. That is powering Copilot daily and podcast style recaps inside Microsoft apps. You can try it now in Copilot Labs. Pick a voice, type your message, tweak the tone and hit play. Oh wow, this is just perfect. <laughs> I can't stop smiling. My cheeks actually hurt. Everything just fell into place and it feels so good. Let's celebrate right now. I'm on top of the world. Ah, this is the happiest I've ever been. I can hardly believe how amazing this feels. I'm just... No, this is absolutely not acceptable. I've repeated myself too many times and I'm done. With it is clear, fast, and already replacing older TTS engines, but MAI One Preview is the bigger story. This is Microsoft's first fully in-house language model, trained on about 15,000 NVIDIA H100 GPUs. That is way fewer than what XAI used to build Grok. They reportedly went past 100,000. Microsoft's goal is not to beat GPT-5 right away. It is to build models optimized for their own stack, their own use cases. Mustafa Suleiman, who now leads Microsoft AI and previously co-founded DeepMind, said it plainly. This is about consumer-first AI, not enterprise, not benchmarks, AI that works across Bing, Windows, and day-to-day -day tools. And he is building a serious team. In recent months, over two dozen DeepMind engineers have joined Microsoft AI. The roadmap is long, but moving fast. The MAI one is already live on LM Arena for public testing, it is currently sitting in the mid ranks around 13th for text tap. Microsoft is treating this like an iterative product. They are gathering feedback, refining, and prepping for specific co-pilot use cases. This also happens while OpenAI is spreading out its infrastructure, moving beyond Azure and tapping cloud services from Google, Oracle, and CoreWeave. Microsoft's once exclusive hosting role is shrinking. And instead of clinging to that partnership, they are investing in platform independence, their own models, their own future. That is it for now. More speed, more control, less dependency. The next wave of AI is already here. Catch you in the next one.